Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited today to be talking to the fantastically talented Amy Garcia all about the last season of Netflix's Lucifer. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is the way that you work with a lot of the dialogue and the scripts because with Ella as a character, she always comes in with such amazing energy and such enthusiasm, you know, and she's always moving at 10 miles an hour, um, even down to the way that you deliver that dialogue and, and play with that energy in the room. And so when you first get the scripts for a new season on this show, how does that inform a lot of your process and the way that you start to work with the dialogue and really thinking about a lot of the specificities of delivery? Wow, that's a great question. Um, well, you know, I always say TV's a writer's medium. So Ildi and Joe write so well for her cadence. I tend to talk super fast just as a person and I am very excited and I do use my hands and um, and so I think that they just started writing to my natural kind of cadence and, and she does have a lot of information to give out you know when you got to figure out who done it so there's a lot of things that need to be said to the detectives and whatnot so um, my first thing is just understanding what I'm saying because if I'm going to say like external examination from the carotid I want to make sure that I have visuals for what I just said and um, and then of course you know in typical Ella fashion she loves what she does and so if there is an opportunity to do like a hammer dance even though there's a corpse, it's it's like, well, to her, it's not macabre. To her, she's helping this dead person as killer come to justice. So I think her light and her brightness, um, you know, is just indicative of of how much she how much passion she has for her job. So um, and then, of course, her T-shirts, which is, is, is always so fun. I have fans so sweet. They 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 say that my glasses on Instagram are really dirty. So they're like, you need a uh, glass cleaner. So they put Ella's favorite t-shirts. Uh, this one is the vampire saying morning suck. And then the other top favorite is every now and then I fall apart, the taco. So it's really cute. And, um, but yeah, anytime that I can make a crime scene less boring, like the, the yoga massacre one, which was just, you know, so fun. Um, I, I try um, to just come in from a place of, okay. This is probably like the most boring part of the show because there's no wings and no cool demon fights. How do we make this fun for the audience? <laughs> And you were bringing up there some of the motions and a lot of the hand movement and how that feeds into her energy as well. Um, but I wanted to talk about when you had DB directing you for one of the episodes and a particular note that he gave you about finding more of the stillness in, in some of the scenes and some of the particular moments with her mm -hmm. and whether that then led you to look for more of those moments, particularly when we look at the episodes for this season, because there is such an internal journey that your character is going through this season and really trying to kind of step back and read people a lot in a very different way because it's the people closest to her for a change. Exactly. Uh, yes, very well put. I, I told DB this, that I did some of my best work ever as an actor under his direction. It was complete faith, like you said. He really encouraged me to be still, which as an actor and as an Ella was very difficult. I'm like, what do you mean be still? Uh, but it's interesting how piercing it is and how much you com can communicate in stillness. And especially when you've set up a character to be so animated, um, it's like someone who talks all the time and is all of a sudden quiet. It's very effective. Um, and there's one particular scene that we had to shoot super quickly. There was uh, you know, a stunt involved. We were at Warner Brothers. It was like midnight and we had to wrap by like 1210. And DB came up <laughs> and Deebs is like, okay, so uh, Amy, um, we have about 10 minutes to get this shot. This, and it was a crucial moment for Ella when she sees something very mind blowing for the first time ever. And I completely trust DB and I'm trying to say this without saying too much, but she, there's nothing to see, but she sees. So I had to just act with a piece of tape and a potential green screen. And so I had to just completely trust DB. And I had never been in this type of scene before um, as a character and as an actor. 
So I had to completely hand over blind faith to DB to just trust that he would make the scene read. And there was no words, no words. Like you said, no movement. It's the first time that she sees something um, beautiful. And uh, it's the first time that she sees, I don't want to give too much away because I want to, but it's so cool. It's the first time that she sees um, you know, something otherworldly and DB captured, um, all of that, you know, it's like, how do you, in one look, how do you feel or showcase for the audience without words and without her cheeky little zingers and her cute shirts? How do you communicate awe and, and, and inspiration and, and mind blowingness and 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 also disappointment that no one let you in. How do you say all of that, communicate all of that with no words, with one look, and with DB just directing you? I don't know, but I have to say that's probably one of my favorite moments in this whole series for me personally and it was all db it was 100 percent db's direction he just knew exactly what to say to me he knew exactly how to communicate because you could be a good director but a, not a great communicator you know actors were we're vulnerable we're like little kids on set we're open so we're very sensitive so if you say something to us that doesn't register with us we could shut sh we could we could you know guard up but DB just knew exactly what to say, and and I am just I, I couldn't ask for it was a very hel heavy Ella episode, and it was in DB's hands, and um, and he just acted like a little angel. And because the episodes are are out now, we're diving into spoiler potential territory a little bit with the next question. Um, so hopefully everybody will go and watch all the episodes and then come back if they haven't already. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about a lot of the inter interpersonal dynamics and relationships for Ella this season, particularly in those early episodes where she is starting to question a lot of the details around her and starting to think about different possibilities of what might actually be going on. Um, because I thought it was so interesting to watch the way that you played that because it completely shifts everything. You know, you were talking before about her putting a lot of guards up and feeling like she couldn't trust people before. And now it's the people that she's closest to over anyone else in the world that she's starting to feel betrayed by. And, and so that brings up a lot of residual feelings from previous seasons. So how did that also allow you not only to tap into the emotional vulnerability from that, but also to carry forth a lot of the emotional groundwork that you had built in previous seasons from those moments of distrust that she's had before? Definitely, she has romantic PTSD she dated a friggin' serial killer who tried to kill her. So that is going to leave some scars. And as open as she is, she has terrible choice in men. And she loves those bad boys. And she comes from poverty. And so she didn't really have a support system. And I think that's why she's such a woman of faith. Because her own brothers are, you know, criminals and even though she refuses to see it and Lucifer very very sweetly comes in like a big older brother but um I think you know it's one thing to be betrayed by a boyfriend it's a whole other thing to be betrayed by not the family you have but the family you choose and Chloe and Lucifer and Maze and Amenadale and Dan and Trixie are the family that she chooses so, um, you know, when she feels like she was the laughing stock, you know, and she says to Lucifer in actually DB's episode, like, was it fun for you? Was it fun for you to see me just walk around completely clueless when I was so lost, you know, after Charlotte's death? Like, like how, you know, I always thought that I was part of the inner circle and I wasn't. You know, and so I think anyone who's ever felt excluded, like, um, you know, or, or, or alone or bullied, like it's such a human thing to, to feel betrayed by someone you trusted. And, um, and what I think is so endearing about Ella, and that's my second favorite episode is, you know, um, cause obviously a wedding happens and something really fun happens at that wedding. But I love when she isn't even, I mean, she isn't even really shocked about what is 
actually and who is actually at the wedding. She's just more pissed and hurt that they didn't tell her. So I think it was also such a refreshing way, just from a big macro narrative perspective, that you know Chloe had to go to another country. She had to go to Italy to wrap her head around seeing Lucifer's devil face. And Dan went borderline crazy and, and started you know drinking and, and, and kind of self-destructing. And so I think it's so fun that Ella didn't do any of those things. Ella was just full on mad that her friends had lied to her. And I think it really speaks to her priorities of like, yeah, angel devils, what else? You know, but like, but how dare you lie to me? Um, because she is a woman of integrity. And so I, I, I think it's the perfect reaction for her. And, and I think it's really, you know, it's really, I'm really lucky that there was a bonus season so that Ella could have such a huge arc and not continue to be, you know, the smartest, dumbest person in the room. And you've you've talked a little bit in, in the past about how as she has become more of an emotionally vulnerable character, that that kind of pushes you into new spaces, both with her as a character, but also performance wise in, in what you're being asked to do and, and where you're carrying yourself into a lot of scenes. Um, and I think there was mentioned that you did a lot of kind of meditation and yoga for, for some of the scenes in previous seasons. And is that something that particularly looking at a lot of the things that you're approaching and a lot of the internal vulnerabilities that you're exploring with her and a character that you've you've continued to do or kind of like how do you set about approaching those scenes that really push you much much further outside of your comfort zone as a performer and as an artist you definitely yes this season ella you know ella gets so many zingers she pops in and out she's a love bug she's a nugget she gets some really funny lines and she's out so um you know she's not the person that gets too oh my god dexter oh oh gee um <laughs> You know, she's not the she's not the character that that gets to have a, a long scene with a lot of ebbs and flows. You know, she comes in and um, and and she she's kind of like a whirlwind. Um, you know, her energy is just uh, passionate and intense and funny. But to really have, um, like you mentioned, things where Ella always knows, and I as an actor. Like, I'm very clear what I'm saying. I do my research. I watch the YouTube tutorials. I know exactly what blood force trauma to the head, you know, looks like and, and, and what causes that. But it's very scary for me as a person and, and probably as Ella to not know and to really, like you said, put your, your, in Ella's case, her heart on the line. And in my case, you know, just not know and not have anything planned. And if, and, and just see what discoveries you make with your scene partner. And lucky for me with, you know, everyone in this cast is so good. And I always say acting is like tennis. You can't, you can't out act someone, you can't act alone. Acting is completely a partnership. And what I will say is, you know, anytime those cameras are rolling, every single person on in that cast is right there. You trust them. They will catch you if you fall. They won't make fun of you if, you know, you're ugly crying or if you have snot coming out of your nose or, or if you, you know, if, if you don't know what's next. So for this, I really just tried to actually not do anything um, for once and just surrendered, which for a type A personality is the hardest thing you can do. It's also so interesting when we watch a lot of the scenes with Ella, you know, particularly because there have been so many moments of her walking into situations and not necessarily knowing the dynamic that was happening right before she was in the room. There's exactly. a lot of moments where you come in and you have to very much change the dynamic of the, the a scene and really shift the energy of what's happening in a moment. And from a performance perspective, what's your approach in doing that? And, and is it something that, that feels quite natural to do because your character doesn't know the energy that she's shifting or changing, you know, or is it a conscious thing where you're really having to think about absorbing what's happening and then pivoting it for everybody else within the scene oh yeah no I, I a I definitely um you know don't really want to know like I'll read the script once and then that's it you know as far as like other people's scenes because I want to I don't want to know like I don't want to subconsciously know that Maze just came back from a demon fight or that Lucifer you know it just flew up from hell or that Chloe you know what I mean uh, like died and came back like I I in fact I remember when we were coming in for our first day in season six 
someone said something, someone was like, and then Chloe dies. And I go, you die? And I said that to Jeremy. I go, you die? And Lauren's like, Amy, yeah, I died last season. And I'm like, whoa. Like, I, I just, I mean, obviously I watched season five, but for some reason I... I think I instinctually just put on like Ella blinders so that I don't play. It's not my job to play that. You know what I mean? It's my job to come in, solve the case, give them information, give them a lead, give them lab results and figure out who killed this person. So I, I try to just do that. Cause then I feel like I'm taking it away from the audience. Like if I know a little bit of what's going on, I feel like it's me like winking to the audience. But if she's just clueless, you know, like I talked about that yoga massacre scene where I'm like this and I'm like, and the stabbing, you know, and, and Lucifer's junk is right here. And I'm like, yeah, the, the, it was just stabby, stabby, stabby over and over again. So I, you can't look, you know, to where your, your end point is. You just got to commit to, to giving the information and then let the audience have the fun of like seeing the whole macro narrative play out. Yeah. And looking back to the musical episode last season, because you had that really beautiful music performance, but I know that the circumstances were changed on you about 10 times. The timeline schedule wise moved up a month and then four days before it completely changed the song that you were going to do because they didn't get the rights clearance for what they actually wanted for that moment. Um, you know, and that's a really terrifying position to be in, to have to go in and to deliver something that is such a key moment and such a pivotal emotional scene and to not have the preparation that you would have usually been able to do and so going through that experience and reflecting on it has it changed your approach in going into other scenes as an actor other projects and other moments when you would ultimately like to do these 10 things but you know that there's not an opportunity to in how you kind of prepare when there's not enough time to fully prepare if that makes sense yeah I mean for someone who's a total preparer there's never enough time to prepare um in fact I just got a new gig, which I can't announce yet, where, I mean, I'm, I'm excitingly terrified. Um, and, and, and so, so I, yes, I guess it boosts my confidence in knowing that even if I don't have the opportunity to do those 10 things, it'll still resonate because that's, that's the most important thing. The most important thing isn't that I do exactly what I plan on doing. The most important thing is that when you know lucifer and ella are singing this song as a tribute to dan that people are moved that's it i mean and so i think that was really the most important thing like going to these cons and and people on twitter just saying i love that song and and it, i cried when i heard it and it was so beautiful or you know or i love you know bad to the bone and and the the you know the um the um you know the remix or the 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 football dance, I mean, that is the most important thing. Like we're entertainers and 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 so I I I I learned to surrender ego and just do your best. You know what I mean? I mean, you do your best. I, I would have loved to have like four months of dance classes and and you know, six months of vocal training leading up to it, but you don't always, it's like, you can't always get what you want, you know, but, but you'll get what you need. And I think it's also good to not over prepare because then you're forced to really be in the moment and listen. And you're forced to just not anticipate, which is so much more fun to watch. So, um, so yes, it was, it was a, it was a good lesson that, you know, you just do what you can. And I think I had that added uncomfortableness in singing it because it was just thrown at me last minute that Ella would be uncomfortable. She's singing, um, you know, goodbye to someone that was basically her brother that didn't take advantage of her. So Ella isn't like on American Idol in that scene. Ella is giving a tribute to someone she loved. And so as long as that was truthful, that was my North Star. Well, I really love everything that you've managed to do with her as a character and in particular the emotional arcs that you've managed to carry her on and look forward to seeing all of the projects that you do next. Thank you so much, Amy. Oh, thank you so much. You were so lovely. Easy breezy.